लास्ट वीडियो आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द थियोरी ऑफ एब्सोल्यूट एडवांटेज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ दिस थियोरी इज द थियोरी ऑफ कंपेरेटिव एडवांटेज विच वॉज गिवन बाय प्रोफेसर डेविड रिकार्डो now this theory is also similar to by two model that is it has two countries two commodities and one resource labor in the theory of absolute advantage adam smith had said that one country has absolute advantage in production of one commodity and other country has got absolute advantage in the production of another commodity and both the countries can trade then and both the countries can benefit but what will happen if one country has absolute advantage in both the commodities and one country does not have absolute advantage in any commodity that is one country has absolute advantage in both the commodities and another country has got absolute disadvantage in both the commodities then as per the comparative advantage theory both the countries can benefit and create if they look into the comparative advantage or the disadvantage so the country which has absolute advantage in both the goods should look into the comparative advantage in the two goods the this country will specialize in the commodity in which its comparative advantage is maximum and the other country will have to specialize in that good in which its comparative disadvantage is minimum so again we assume total resource to be 200 tons for both the countries same two countries ghana and south korea and two commodities cocoa and rice this is also the assumption the two commodities now we have to calculate production in ghana ghana requires 10 tons of resource to produce 1 ton of cocoa so the production of cocoa is 200 upon 10 which is equal to 20 tons now this is same as in the absolute advantage theory the numbers are also same now what we have done is we have changed the numbers in the rice production now let us assume ghana requires 13.3 units of resource to produce 1 ton of rice now in this we have reduced the numbers in the rice production because we want to have ghana advantage in both the commodities and that is why the number is reduced to 13.3 now you may wonder from where did i get 13.3 the 13.3 number we have i have taken it is an assumption so that i get the round figure of 15 so the rice production is 200 upon 13.3 which is equal to 15 the only thing you have to see is ghana gets advantage in both and south korea gets disadvantage in both numbers you can have of your choice but you have to show the calculations put it in the tabular form and reproduce so ghana has got comparative advantage in both ghana can produce either 20 tons of cocoa or 15 tons of rice now coming to south korea we have to do the similar calculation south korea requires 40 units for cocoa production and therefore 
the total cocoa production for south korea will be 200 upon 40 which is equal to 5 now coming to the rice production it is 200 upon 20 which is equal to 10 now you can see the production in south korea for both the goods is less than the production in ghana for both the goods now as we had tabulated in the previous video for absolute advantage theory in the same way we will tabulate total production in both the countries ghana and south korea so ghana can either produce 20 tons of cocoa or 15 tons of rice again same way it is either or it cannot produce both 20 tons of cocoa and 15 tons of rice because for producing 20 tons of cocoa it is using all its resources of 200 tons and vice versa now south korea can either produce 5 tons of cocoa or 10 tons of rice right now you can see that ghana has got advantage in both the commodities and south korea has got disadvantage in both the commodities now the question is in which product ghana will specialize and in which product south korea will specialize now you can see the advantage ghana has got in cocoa is more compared to rice ghana has got the advantage of 15 tons in cocoa in rice its advantage is only 5 tons so ghana will specialize in the production of cocoa and south korea will specialize in production of rice because south korea's comparative disadvantage is less in this now similarly we have the situation when there is no trade what will happen when there is no trade both the countries will have to produce both the commodities so they will utilize 50 percent of the resource for the production of cocoa and 50 percent of resource for the production of rice so we divide the numbers in the earlier table with two and we get this table that is the situation in absence of trade so ghana can produce 10 tons of cocoa and 7.5 tons of rice south korea can produce 2.5 tons of cocoa and 5 tons of rice and the total production for both the commodities is 12.5 and 12.5 now when there is trade as i said ghana has comparative advantage in cocoa and south korea has comparative advantage in rice production so ghana will specialize in production of cocoa and south korea will specialize in rice production and ghana will use all its resources for rice production so it can produce 20 ghana will i'm sorry ghana will use all its resources for the production of cocoa so it can produce 20 tons of cocoa and zero rice similarly south korea will use all its resources for the production of rice it will produce zero cocoa and 10 tons of rice so total production is coming to 20 and 10 so gain in production is how much for cocoa 20 minus 12.5 earlier it was 12.5 so in case of cocoa it is 7.5 and in case of rice we are getting negative because earlier 12.5 units of rice was produced so it is uh, minus 2.5 actually and the net gain is 7.5 minus 2.5 which is equal to 5 now coming to consumption after trade let us assume that both the countries exchange 4 4 units of each so ghana will 
give four units of cocoa to south korea and it is left with 16 units of cocoa and four units it gets from south korea of rice in exchange for cocoa so ghana's consumption is 16 and 4 and south korea's consumption is 4 and 6 and the total consumption of both is 20 and 10. now coming to gains in consumption before trade ghana was consuming uh, 10 tons of cocoa but after trade it is consuming 16 tons of cocoa and before trade it was consuming 7.5 tons of rice but afterwards it is getting 4.5 so the total of before for Ghana is 17.5 but afterwards it is getting 20 the total of both cocoa and rice so even though there is slight decrease in rice consumption but the total has increased so it has got the net gain similarly for South Korea we calculate before and after before trade cocoa it was producing only 2.5 tons and afterwards it is 4 rice it was producing 5 tons afterwards it is 6 so it is getting gain in both cocoa as well as rice production and if we add before for both cocoa and rice for south korea it is 7.5 and 10 so the net gain for south korea is 2.5 in the same way the net gain for ghana is also 2.5 so both the countries benefit and trade even if there is no absolute advantage and yeah this has been proved by david ricardo with this two by two example simplified model two countries and two commodities now the theory of comparative advantage argues that trade is a positive sum game that is the total will be more you you are left with positive that is it is positive sum game actually before the classical economists adam smith and david ricardo there were mercantilists who said that trade is zero sum game that is one country's positive will be cancelled out by the other country's negative and therefore the total is zero so one country which exports will benefit and one country which imports loses and the total comes out to be zero but here the economists have proved that the trade is not a zero sum game but is a positive sum game in which all the countries of the world gain potential world production is greater with unrestricted free trade than when it is with the restricted trade and therefore the theory of comparative advantage is providing a strong rationale for encouraging free trade in the world uh, coming to the assumptions the theory assumes that there are only two countries and two goods zero transportation cost zero the assumption of zero transportation cost is required so that the differences in comparative advantage are not wiped out 
with that increase in transportation cost and therefore the economists have assumed zero transportation costs and the next assumption is similar prices and values resources are mobile between the goods within countries but not across the countries that is resources can move from cocoa production to rice production and vice versa within ghana and within south korea but they don't move from ghana to south korea and from south korea to ghana then this theory assumed constant returns to scale and the last one fixed stock of resources Thank you all of you for watching any comments suggestions and questions please put it in the comments box